Hi, I'm Ruby, and today we're going to take a brief look at the different components within a reference, as well as a few different styles of referencing you're likely to come across during your time at university. In this video, we will look at what needs to go into a reference, as well as some of the differences between styles. However, if you're not sure when or why you need to reference, I encourage you to check out our Referencing Fundamentals video. In your time at university, you'll be required to reference any ideas which are not your own, so when paraphrasing, summarising or quoting in your assignments, and you'll be required to do this in a particular referencing style, of which there are many. The referencing style that you're required to use often depends on your discipline, so your lecturer or tutor will likely tell you which referencing style they want you to follow, but if you're not sure, just ask. It really does matter. It's also important to make sure you're using the correct edition or version of the referencing style. APA has just updated to its 7th edition, while the Harvard style in Australia, AGPS 6, will be different to international Harvard styles. The best piece of advice I can give you is to follow a referencing guide. And the good news is that Flinders provides these guides for the common referencing styles. So let's have a look at the breakdown of components within referencing, and we'll have a look at some different referencing styles. The first thing to recognise is that while there are many different referencing styles, they all require two components, an in-text citation, which is used as a quick marker or indication of the source used, and a separate reference list, where the detailed information is presented in order to allow the reader to go and find that source for themselves. Let's take a look at in-text referencing. Here we're creating a quick point of reference for the reader to let them know that the information we're using has come from another source, while also giving them the information that they need in order to find the details in our reference list. And despite the large number of different styles, they do fall into two main categories, the author date system and the footnote system. There are subtle but important formatting differences between these styles, so do make sure to follow the guide for the specific style that you're using. Common author date styles include APA and Harvard AGPS 6, which require the author's surnames and publication date to be included in text. Author date styles such as Harvard and APA allow you to create citations in both information prominent, where the author's names are not included in the sentence, and author prominent, where the author's names are included in the sentence. And this will help you work out where the reference should be placed within that sentence. So in an author prominent citation, the publication year is placed in brackets next to the author's name, while in an information prominent citation, the reference is placed next to the information used. If we're referencing the whole sentence, the reference will likely be placed at the end. You can even use more than one source to support the information in your sentence. The position of the reference within the sentence is important, and it may also impact the grammar of your sentence. So to determine this, read the sentence out loud, ignoring the information inside the brackets. The second category of in-text referencing you may come across are footnote systems. These also require an in-text citation, but are generally in the form of a number, which then directly corresponds to a number in the reference list and or footnote at the bottom of the page. Common footnote styles include Chicago, Vancouver, and IEEE. Similar to the author date system, the in-text citations are placed next to the author's name when mentioned, or next to the information used. The grammar of your sentence is then impacted in the same way, so be sure to read the sentence out loud, ignoring the citation number or information inside of the brackets. But again, for the differences in formatting of the citations, follow your style-specific guide. Now we've looked at in-text citations, let's move on to the reference list. The reference list is placed at the end of your document and contains detailed information for the sources you've used in text. The idea being that the reader can use the in-text reference you've provided to then find the detailed reference information in your list, and thus find the source for themselves. It makes sense then, that when looking at the content of the reference list, we think about the purpose. And while there are differences in formatting, fundamentally all styles contain the same information. So the author's names, the publication year, the title of the work, and then the publication information, such as the title of the journal or the title of the book, edition and page numbers. For online sources, the reference also includes a DOI, a digital object identifier, or a URL. 
Different disciplines put an emphasis on different information, so you will find that the order and formatting of these details differs across referencing styles. The most obvious difference is the order of references within your list. So for footnoted or numbered systems, references occur in numerical order, so they're placed in the order in which they appear in text. But for author date style, the references are placed in alphabetical order, according to the surname of the first author. Now the terminology used to describe referencing is also important. So you've likely heard the terms reference list and bibliography being thrown around, but while you may hear people use them interchangeably, they do have different definitions as well as different content. A reference list will contain the reference details of all the sources that you've used in your assignment, so all of these should then have a corresponding in-text reference. While a bibliography contains all the sources you've read in order to inform your writing, so even if you don't use the information in your final draft. A bibliography is often significantly longer than a reference list and is used to demonstrate the depth and breadth of the research that you've done. The requirement for a bibliography or a reference list is often discipline specific, so make sure to find out which one you're required to create. Thank you for watching and best of luck with your referencing.